Also, I want to move on and talk about Diddy's new album called The Love Album Off The Grid. Um, it sounds like it was made off the grid, which might explain why it sounds so amazing. But this legitimately might be my standout contester so far for album of the year. I don't usually throw out those type of suggestions this early on, but considering how much of a vibe and atmosphere and ambiance this album sounded like, I'm honestly thinking this could have been a movie. This could have been a score for something. Like it's so good. So, 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 so good. Um, there's over what, 21 tracks, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, 23, sorry. 23 tracks. Um, many different features. The Justin Bieber song, <sighs> fuck me. But um, Sway Lee one's great. Um, Diddy and Josie, Diddy and Niger, Nova Way. And one thing I have to give the guy credit for, he does get a lot of like trolling and memes because of that, you know, be up, be up, be up in your video, all that sort of meme that people know him for. But he actually did a really good job of not overly sprinkling himself on the record. He could have easily done it if he wanted to, but he does, he's not heavy handed with it. It's subtle. Sometimes you don't even notice it the first time. So big up Offset for like being aware of that and letting the music speak for itself. And the music did. The music is hard, man. It's really, really, really good. And it reminds me of what that level of R&B actually sounds like, you know? It reminds you what it sounds like, that expensive, warmth, chilled out studio with great equipment. That's what it basically sounds like. It just sounds really lush and happy and stuff. So big up them and what they're doing. And again, can't wait to see more of it when it does eventually launch. Can't wait to see more of it when it does eventually launch. Oh yeah, so yeah, and I don't know, everything about it, love. I think one of my favourite tracks, standout ones for sure, is Kim Porter at the end featuring Babyface and John Legend. That might be one of the tracks that you play during a funeral or during a wedding or something and you're going to bawl your eyes out. Like, it nearly had me in tears. Like, that track is so emotional. Um, it's amazing to hear Babyface and John Legend crooning back to back. It's absolutely incredible to hear. That got me in my feels. Um, I love the track with Mary J. Blige called I Like. Um, I love the Ty Dollar Sign and Jeremiah features throughout because you're a reminder of their level of talent. When it comes to Ty Dolla Sign, you're reminded that he has this amazing ability to do amazing features, but his own stuff just isn't hitting the same, unfortunately. You've got a really good track by Justin Bieber called Moments, which might be one of my standouts. You've got an amazing Burner Boy interlude, actually, which is somewhere, I don't know where the Burner Boy interlude is, but it's just a random interlude of Burner Boy just croning, and it sounds so good, legit. This album was kind of, I felt like it was made for like a sitting or maybe a bit of love making or something. It was made to be enjoyed from the beginning to the end. That's why it sounds like a score. It goes in different directions. It has these interesting little skits and stuff that are really funny and cool and sweet and adorable. It's just it's just a really, really good and well put together album. Say what you want about Diddy's business practices. I've said a bunch on my pod, on my social media accounts. And, you know, it's warranted, especially considering the recent topic about publishing and how he essentially has extracted all of the value from the publishing and lined his pockets. And now that he's lined his pockets, he's kind of thrown the scraps back to the rightful owners. All of that is obviously scummy. But again, the annoying thing about it is that he's not the only person. It's like a standard practice in music. That's why he's doing it, right? But just doing it to your own people is a bit scummy. But that aside, when it comes to music, when it comes to that level of artistry, this guy is on another planet. To be fair, it's no surprise though, because I remember Last Train to Paris, um, that might be one of the best albums I've ever listened to from Diddy. Ever, ever, ever. And he's got a lot of great compilations and shit, right? And I think Last Train to Paris was legitimately one of the best R&B albums of all time. Or the contemporary um, R&B albums that I've ever heard. It was so, 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 so good. And it's no surprise that he's been able to do the same thing when it comes to this collection of essential great R&B records. Like, I won't even call it all R&B. It's just really good music. That's the thing that I really like. It's just really amazing, emotional, and just fantastic music that you can really kind of connect to um, and you can share with, with people. And yeah, I've enjoyed it, listening to it this entire time. And I'm, I can't wait to listen to it in the gym, actually. I love listening to a bit of R&B in the gym. I just wish we had a club, a space that we could go to that basically played this type of music not the bait turn up shit but it just played this sort of stuff maybe it, maybe it needs to be a lounge bar or something but i wish there was a place where you could go to where you could listen to flipping 
you know, 60 to 80 BPM R&B and just kind of two-step and just enjoy yourself. Like, that would have been so sick to see. But, you know, um, what can you do? I guess you have to just wait for the turn up and hope that they play slow jams at the end. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> that's the only thing that you can do. I swear to God, that's the only, only only thing that you can do um and obviously check in google just now in the same year that my um sorry last train to paris by diddy came out you know what also came out that year my beautiful duchess to fantasy by drake i'm sorry drake by kanye west drake what the fuck am i talking about um lcd sound system this isn't this is happening um oh my god vampire weekend contra came out the same year wow the black keys brothers album came out the same year 2010 that was a good year for music bro Last Train to Paris, Fake Me Later by Drake came out at that time. Um, Robin Body Talk came out at that time. MGMT Congratulations came out at that time. That might be one of the greatest album releases years of all time. Tudor Cinema, Taurus History. Yo, this defined my flipping time growing up, all of these albums. Kings of Leon, Come Around, um, Come Around Sundown, Fortet, This, this Loved New. He hasn't really developed actually from that sound, to be fair, has he really? um wow man this is quite cool to see justin bieber my war 2.0 was there spoons lana del rey rick ross teflon don released on that year okay cool to see so i guess there's something in the water but did he remind all of us he reminded me anyway that he's a real talent um he's a real talent when it comes to his producing thing he's got a real ear for music um and it's no coincidence right he's a he he, he reminds me he's a bit of a raver like he's a party boy so it makes sense he's got good taste i think when you're a party boy you usually end up in weird parties not all of them involve you going to clubs with like no lights and you know a dark club sorry with like a dj playing some of them are kickback type of events and um, at those are uh, those type of gatherings you have to be very conscious of what type of music to play how not to scare away the hoes how not to get people annoyed and wanting to like swap and switch you on the music um controlling duties you have to be very aware how you're going to navigate it and someone like him because he parties a lot he's probably ended up at a ton of after hours he knows exactly what works what doesn't work and he was was able to put all that together into an album actually what i'd love to see i'd love to see flipping diddy and that group jungle do a flipping live show or something that would be pretty cool like you start off with slow jams and you kind of end it with that kind of you know faster pace music that jungle make that's obviously been produced amazingly too that might be actually quite cool to see actually going forward but hey what do i know when this comes to this sort of stuff what do i bloody know